Unforgettable stories out of Western Jamaica from the scrapbooks of Adrian Freita. Having taken on the dubious title of Jamaica's crime capital, many were led to believe that the parish of St. James had totally embraced the inform of the dead and the see and blind ear and deaf culture, which would basically mean not cooperating with the security forces. However, in 2010, the community of Rosites, under the leadership of the late Pastor Nollis King, signed a pact for a peace known as the Rosites Covenant of Peace, which saw residents collectively deciding that they would no longer accept crime, especially shootings and murder, as a way of life. And in a move no one could envisage in an inner city community, they decided to join force with the police in stamping out lawlessness. That profound rejection of lawlessness came about as a result of a decision taken by Pastor King not to preside over any funeral service of persons killed in violence unless the community first decided that they wanted to turn their back on that way of life. To the surprise of many, King got men considered to be hardcore gangsters to bind to his deal and to act as enforcers of the peace. Initially, some residents and even the police were skeptical of the peace pack. Some people arguing that it was embraced by the gangsters only because they wanted to take some of the heat off themselves so that they could regroup and come again. However, with the peace stretching from days into weeks, from weeks into months, and from months into years, Two years in fact, the skeptics finally began to see the light. Pastor King and the community were serious about peace. During the period of peace, Pastor King tried his best to initiate social intervention programs where the young people were taught skills at a center attached to his church. However, with his calls to the business community for assistance to help to keep the programs going, not getting the requisite support, the programs gradually collapsed. Within another two years, the community was back to square one. More shootings and murders. In this edition of Lest You Forget, I will be looking back at an incident in which the Rosa's community demonstrated that they were serious about breaking away from lawlessness and embracing peace. The story which was printed on April 12, 2010 under the headline Rosite's Community Group Apprehend Gunman read as follows. A gunman was apprehended by militant members of the Rosite's Covenant of Peace yesterday morning and two illegal guns and a quantity of ammunition he had in his possession taken from him. The man, identified only as Gilligan, was turned over to the police who were summoned to the area after he was held. Gilligan, who resides in the community, is an ex-convict who had previously served time in prison on gun-related charges. According to reports, shortly before midnight on Saturday, residents of Rosites heard gunshots being fired in a section of the community. Subsequent investigations by the members of the Rosites Covenant of Peace, a community group with a mandate to rid the community of lawlessness, led them to Gilligan's house. During a search of Gilligan's house, the residents claim a scandal bag was found with two handguns and several rounds of ammunition. He was tied up by the residents who secured the weapons and ammunition and summoned the police. The community is taking a zero-tolerance approach to matters like these, said Pastor Nollis King, who heads the Rosite's covenant of peace. It is not that we are taking the law into our own hands, we are just taking a proactive approach of bringing peace to the community. The Rosite's covenant of peace was established over, just over six months ago at the insistence of King, who said he had become tired of bearing the victims of gang violence in the community which once had 16 murders in a single month in 2006. I think I have buried more than 100 young men who have been killed senselessly in my years here in Rosite, said King, who heads the Rosite's full gospel church. 
I have challenged the community to work with me to establish peace and they have responded. Gilligan was roundly rebuked by members of the community, including his own mother, who described him as a total disgrace to me, as he was led from his house to await the arrival of the police on the Rosite's main road. Assistant Commissioner of Police Denver Freighter has aired the initiative as a major positive for the community and has promised that the police will be working closely with the community to ensure the desired objective is achieved. In the just over six months since the formation of the group, the community has witnessed only one murder, a man who was stabbed to death in a domestic dispute. In the ten years since the Rosite's covenant of peace has fallen apart, the community has returned to a state of lawlessness albeit not on the scale as it was before the Covenant of Peace. However, with Pastor King no longer around, having been claimed by death, it is unsure as to whether another initiative of that sort will ever be enforced again. In looking back at those two years in which peace reigned in Rosites, it was definitely one of those unforgettable stories out of Western Jamaica. Unforgettable stories out of Western Jamaica from the scrapbooks of Adrian Freita. Before you go, please remember to subscribe. <laughs>